Welcome back to South Florida Food Chat. I'm Randy Kasowitz. We're joined by John Falco today from Thorn, located mm -hmm. on Bird Road and 69th. You got it. And uh, first of all, we're going to get to your restaurants and, and all the things you're involved with, but you're a local South Florida Miami, and uh, we don't come across those too often. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, the, I'm from West Kendall, actually, way out west, definitely in the burbs. Um, but yeah, yeah, a lot of the hospitality uh, scene down here, it's, you know, it's ex expensive. It's capital intensive uh, industry. So a lot of that is driven by out of towners. And I did feel. you always have a passion for food when you were in high school? Did, did you know that this was the direction your career would take you? Uh, you know, obviously you never know anything and I'm an impulsive guy, but uh, <laughs> I'm also risky. So, uh, but no, you know, I um, grew up kind of in that restaurant world a bit with uh, my mother. My mother was a waitress at Denny's on 36th Street for a, a very, very long time, you know, and I spent a lot of time in there just kind of, you know, chatting with uh, with cooks and with with uh, uh, waitresses, as they were called back then, um, servers. And uh, it really made me fall in love with, with the restaurant world. You know, I always knew I wanted to open something, a bar, restaurant at some point in time, yeah. All right, let's talk about why we're here today. First, yeah. let's start with Thorn. Sure. And uh, tell me a little bit about it because I wasn't familiar with it at first, but uh, I know the location, mm -hmm. I know the area, and I know it's a booming area. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's um, you know, the area has never been a depressed area per se, but it's definitely going through some kind of a generational change out there in that Westchester uh, um, area. So Thorn's a cocktail bar, big cocktail bar, 4,200 square feet, uh, 3,000 of that is, is um, air conditioned inside, really pretty as a, I wouldn't say a Nor New Orleans themed, but if you walk in, you certainly would realize it's New Orleans inspired. Um, a lot of plants, uh, everything, uh, Everything looking looking real, uh, uh, you know. I wouldn't say classy, but the way we've um, put it, if we we've, we've called it decayed elegance, which was a, a term coined by an artist friend of mine, which I feel describes New Orleans very well, as long as uh, as well as Thorn. Okay, um, I like that. Yeah, decayed yeah. elegance. Decayed elegance, you know. So uh, it's nice, but you're still comfortable in it. All right, we'll start talking about some of your dishes and food and the cockas. Well, what are we looking at here? So what you're looking at here is probably my favorite uh, handheld on our menu. So that's, um, or rather not handheld, favorite appetizer on the menu. That's our bulgogi fries. So that's a really, really nice dish. We have some really beautiful fries we get from our supplier. We top that with some bulgogi, which is uh, sauteed beef. We slow cook ours for, for hours. Um, and then we have a really, really nice kimchi crema, which with a lot of those funky, refreshing uh, characteristics of Korean cooking and a, a jalapeno aioli top it with some cilantro and it's a, just a really really nice dish to pick out with friends very filling when you think of french fries you know I have kids I think of kids and uh, are you yeah. kid friendly because I know you're a bar yeah. I know you're a cocktail bar course, you, are kid yeah. you can bring the kids in there for dinner or lunch absolutely yeah I got two wonderful kids of my own so I definitely want to make anything that they're not invited to for sure you got it what are we yeah. uh, what are we looking at here these are Wagyu meatballs. You know, we've we've uh, we have a couple uh, restaurants as we've we chatted before before we went on air here, and we've always kind of been famous for our meatballs. Really, really beautiful dish. These we actually introduced some Wagyu beef into, which gives it this beautiful, beautiful beef flavor. Nice and tender. They sit they sit hot in uh, in, in our delicious uh, California plum tomato sauce, and they're served with a cilantro, excuse me, a um, citrus herb de ale, uh, ricotta that goes really beautiful with them, some garlic flatbread. I know when we started, you, you mentioned that you're a cocktail bar, but yeah. th these are some high-end food dishes you're showing us. Yeah, really. You know, they're rooted in, in traditional um, bar food, really, but made with really exceptional ingredients, uh, as scratch as we could possibly make it within reason, and... Um, Really tasting good, honestly. What is this one right here? So that's our breakfast pizza. That's one of our brunch items. We have a wonderful brunch every Saturday and Sunday morning. That is a pizza. We, we house make all of our dough. That has a, eggs on it, mozzarella cheese, bacon, of course, and a coffee-infused maple syrup, which is incredibly delicious. So you mentioned yeah. Sunday brunch. What, uh, what are your hours of operation? Sure. So I was, we're open pretty, pretty late. You know, we're not, I wouldn't say we're an incredibly late night spot, um, but we're open to 1 a.m. on Fridays and Saturdays. During the week, it kind of fluctuates, you know, 11 o'clock midnight. 
but we're open seven days a week and we're open for lunch all seven of those days as well. Okay, what are we looking at now? It looks like a burger that's with, a, a, with a fried egg on top. Yeah, that's a breakfast burger. So that's uh, some really nice bacon that we cook on a flat top there. A uh, butcher blend uh, patty that's just smashed so you get a nice crisp to it. Of course, some Martin's potato roll because you can't go wrong with those. And you top anything with an egg, it's delicious, right? Yeah, absolutely. So that's can't, our breakfast can't go wrong burger with that. there. Yeah. Okay. Um, you mentioned cocktails uh, sure. first. Tell me about a little bit about the cocktails as well that you serve there. Yeah, so our cocktails, uh, what you see on screen there is our Sunset Dreams. That is uh, my, probably my favorite cocktail we make. Um, it's a kind of a traditional daiquiri, but a pina colada. So if you think about that, right? So it's a rum, rum forward cocktail, but it's gonna drink just like a pina colada, just without the you know, volume from a blender. Yeah. <laughs> really, really pretty. Sounds amazing. What's that called again? That's the Sunset Dreams. It's named after a local band uh, run by Carlos Escani, incredible, incredibly talented musician. Um, and it's been big friends and uh, family of ours. For How a while. about this one? So that's the same breakfast burger. That one's just cut in half there just to show you the uh, that maple syrup we got oh, dripping yeah. out. Really, really delicious bite. Uh, that, that, that looks, yeah. um, it's almost lunchtime, you can tell. I was about to say, yeah. That looks really good. And, and here? These are our chef fries. You know, our original chef, um, he would just take our fries, cover them with some herb and, and Parmesan Reggiano. And that's, uh, that's what we have here. And that's dipping into a truffle aioli, which is an aioli we make with, um, with a lot of uh, black pepper and, and, of course, some truffle oil. Classic, delicious. Yeah. Okay. And looks like we got some kind of barbecue. Oh, yeah. That's our steak frites. That, that's obviously the picture is a little dark, but that's yeah. a really well cooked, beautiful prime vasil, um, similar to a skirt steak, but a little leaner. Re it's really tender, and we serve it with a with a crispy fingerling potatoes that we smash and refry, and of course some of that truffle aioli for dipping. That that's just and a side of a house made chimichurri we make as well, uh, fresh herbs. Yeah, that, I, that's I think a wild I'm gonna good make dish. it there. Uh, I'm gonna make it there this weekend. <laughs> that's a wild good dish. How, how yeah. many nights a week are you there? So, I, I, you know, I'm there probably w once or twice in the evening per week, um, but I'm there a lot of times during the day. Of course, I got a lot of kids to tend to, both real and restaurant yes. version. So I'm always bouncing around. Yeah. What do we have here? Our wings. Our wings are really, really, really nice. We um, obviously cook those multiple times, as anyone does, that, that makes crispy wings. Um, we uh, water roast those, similar to how uh, the Chinese community makes pecking duck. Um, which gives us a nice, nice blister on the skin. And then we finish them in the fryer. And we, um, we, these here are tossed in honey, honey truffle uh, sriracha sauce. But we have a couple other flavors, everything from lemon pepper to just a dry rub to um, a really nice scotch bonnet that'll light you up if you're not ready for it. But it's pretty, pretty dish. What was we, that last one, a scotch bonnet? Scotch bonnet, bonnet yeah, which, you know, a, a pepper that's really famous in Bahamian cooking. Um, sweet, think of it like a sweeter habanero, about the same yeah. heat. And then we house make uh, all of our ranch and blue cheese as well. Wow. Yeah. Oh, really really sounds good. Yeah. I may not make it till Sunday to get there. That <laughs> sounds really good. How about here? It looks like pizza. Yeah. So that's our Westchester White again. Um, house made dough. Westchester White. We top it with an ample amount of that citrus herb ricotta. Uh, tons of uh, garlic and shallot confit there. That just have been fried in, in oil. Really beautiful, beautiful um, aromatics you're going to get from this dish. So it looks heavy, but it eats a lot lighter than it than it looks. Another and, great sharing dish. And that pizza is called the Westchester White. Westchester White. White. What a yes. great name. Yeah, White Pizza just because uh, it has no red sauce. Uh, understand. Yep. And this right here, that's the newest newest addition to our menu. That's a spicy chicken sandwich. So uh, we take a chicken thigh, we slice it so it's a little thinner. You get even more breading per pound there. So that's stacked pretty high. We do a house-made coleslaw, and then that sauce we use that we put on that Martin's potato roll with a couple house-made pickles is a blend of our honey truffle sriracha and our truffle uh, aioli. So um, you get that that funkiness from the truffle, but you still get that nice spice from the, uh, the sriracha and a little sweetness from the honey. Beautiful these are, dish. These are some amazing amazing dishes that you're showing us mm -hmm. here who, who creates them where, where is this coming from is it you is it your partners is it your yeah. chef yeah so it's you know th these have been a um blend of, of a couple different folks you know i've come up with a couple of them our, our original chef came up with a couple of the dishes our uh current chef it has taken a couple of those dishes made them a little better so we um you know we, we've kind of been a, a, a conglomeration if you will of uh, or the menus rather a conglomeration of everyone's mind, which is the way we, we always like to do things. You know, we don't waste brain power. No, definitely say, not. Right? What is this here? 
So speaking of chefs, so this was created by uh, Chef Stephanie Diaz, who's our executive pastry chef at Crybaby. This is our banana, our bourbon banana bread pudding, which is a bread pudding from Martin's Potato Rolls, which is out of this world, and everyone should do that. A scoop of banana um, ice cream, we of course make in house at, at Crybaby, and then that's topped with a bourbon glaze. It's th this is probably my favorite dessert of all time. Th this is this is a must have if you come in it's here. A, it's a must have. Thorn. You got to finish with a with with this this dish for sure. Homemade ice cream and bread pudding. Yeah, all homemade. Yeah, wow. and a crumble, nice shortbread crumble. It's to die for. We originally served this at the Sobe Wine and Food Festival at a Tyler Florence event, um, and he was blown away by it too. So real nice dish. I highly recommend it. Okay. Uh, you yeah. mentioned Crybaby. That's an ice cream shop that you mm -hmm. have. You serve yep. their ice cream in your restaurant. We do, yeah. But uh, tell me, where is that located, and how did you come to that idea? Sure, sure. So we, um, the ice cream shop next to our pizza spot down in Palmetto Bay became vacant. We took it over. Um, we brought in Chef Stephanie Diaz and, and we kind of took off from there. So, but that is currently located down in Palmetto Bay on Southwest 174th Street in US 1. And then we have one inside Thorn uh, at the moment as well. And we're uh, in the works of opening something up in Kendall uh, out in our hometown as well. So, yeah. Very nice. Uh, what part, what, what is the most difficult uh, part of your business to run? Is it the, the ice cream? Is it the brewery? Is it Thorn, which is a restaurant and cocktail bar? Sure, yeah. I, I would say Thorn is certainly uh, the toughest. There's just so many moving parts. Um, it's the newest, of course, which is always a challenge. You know, and, and we have a ton of employees. You know, and humans are the most beautiful creatures in the world, but like most beautiful things, we're very complex, right? So managing the human is both what makes the job incredible and, uh, and, and challenging. I got you. So. Uh, I mentioned the brewery. You do have a, a, a side mm -hmm. business. I don't know how small a side it, it yeah. is called the Lincoln's called Lincoln's Beard. Sure. Which sure, is yeah. an unusual name, but what a, what a great name for a brewery. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it sticks. Right. So, um, yeah, certainly it, it's, it's our biggest location. You know, we have, if I had to guess, maybe about 8,000, 9,000 square feet out there total, not uh, under roof. We have about uh, 4,000. Um, and it's, it's been around since 2016, going on eight years. And um, it's a local brewery down here, very well known. We, we love it. It supplies beer to all of our locations. Wow. Yeah. And can you drink or sample uh, beers at the place? Can you physically go there? Sure. It's open yeah. for business? Absolutely. It's open for business. We have a big tap room, tons of live music. Uh, you know, it's just four blocks from Thorn. So it's, it's a great environment if you want to go Where, somewhere. Where's it located? Louder. It's on Bird Road and 73rd uh, Avenue, 73rd, so just four Bird blocks. 73rd. Mm -hmm. And do they serve food there? They do. We, have we partner with Tacos and Tattoos, which is a Kendall staple, a ta uh, locally owned tattoo, uh, excuse me, taco shop. And they have a big uh, shipping container kitchen in the back. They're serving incredible tacos. Sounds like a, sounds yeah, like a great really night. Thorn and then the brewery. That's the way to Can't do it. Can't go yeah. wrong. Or vice versa. Either one works. What are the hours of operation for the brewery? Sure. Hours of operation for brewery, actually a little later than Thorn. You know, we're, we're open still about 1 a.m. on Fridays and Saturdays, sometimes a little later if we have events. And then um, anywhere from 11 to, to 1 a.m. during the week. We have a great karaoke night on Wednesday. It's open a little late. Okay, if I decide to come to Thorn this Sunday night, sure. what are the two must go-to dishes that I have to try? Yeah, if it... If we know the dessert. Well, that's sure, a absolutely. If you're going there and you're never going to come back, I would say, which I would not advise, I advise you to come back often. Absolutely. Um, I would definitely try the steak for it. Got to have the dessert. I would have a Sunset Dreams cocktail, and I would have a, they call her Lola cocktail, um, which is a essentially our version of an Aperol spritz that's made with some passion fruit puree and some orange blossom water, and of course, Aperol a vodka based cocktail and it's um, absolutely delicious, delicious drink. Uh, and it's a favorite of everyone. It's topped with a marigold, so you can't go, can't what, miss it. What's your favorite part about this business? My, is absolutely uh, the people. You know, I love my people, I love my folks, I love talking to them, love learning about them and, and um, you know, love working with them to nourish others. I, honestly, it, it, it never ceases to put a smile on, on my face to watch someone eat one of our dishes or drink one of our beers or drinks. And it's uh, really an amazing experience. What's your least favorite part? Ooh, my least favorite part? Um, dealing with government authorities. <laughs> I would say, you know, I understand they have a job and a role to do, but it's, it's a challenge. 
Um, do you see yourself continuing to expand with different concepts? Do you have any ideas in mind? You know, uh, my business partner and I, I'm 43 now, my business partner and I are probably done with the con with the bar and restaurant concepts. You know, we certainly have uh, uh, plenty on our plate. You know, we'd love to continue to expand Crybaby uh, as a concept, both uh, in Miami and, and outside of Miami. Tell me about Crybaby. I know it's the ice cream sure. shop, but w when you say expand, what makes, there's a lot of ice cream shops everywhere. Sure. What makes it so unique? What makes it different? Yeah, you know, one, I think our aesthetic is really interesting. We have a vintage Vegas style aesthetic, which is incredible. Um, our merch is great. Uh, but really, I think what sets it apart, and I feel like everyone sitting in the seat has probably said this, but is the quality. You know, we were voted uh, Reader's Choice, uh, uh, best ice cream last year in Miami. I think we're going to do pretty well this year again in the New Times. Um, and, uh, uh, I think it's really it's really that we're also nimble. You know, we're run by um, a, a really talented uh, a group of, of chefs, and obviously, my business partner and I have been in this game for a while. We have that bar restaurant mentality, and um, yeah, I, I'd say that's what sets us apart. Is there a particular flavor that we have to try that you're known for at Crybaby? Sure, worth worth noting. My chef would kill me if I didn't notice. Uh, we're a creamery in a bakehouse, so we make um, some of the best cookies uh, that you've ever tasted in your life, as long as uh, as well as some of the best ice cream. So for ice cream, I would go, ironically, with milk and cookies, which is our best seller, and it's just, it's, you can't miss, it's delicious. I think our chocolate ice cream is the best I've ever had. Um, and on uh, the cookie side, you can't go wrong, but obviously our salted chocolate chip is a must have. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Um, the, it's a long, it's a, it's a tough business because, especially with the hours, you guys are open to 1 a.m., some of your locations. Sure. Uh, how, do you turn it, how do you turn it all off? I know you got, a family and kids, but sure. how do you find time to just let go for a little bit? Yeah, you know, luckily <clears throat> now, after about eight years in this business, um, we have wonderful GMs that run each location. And we have an operations manager who's fantastic. So luckily, you know, they, they absorb the strong majority of the day-to-day -day issues, at least late night issues. Um, but it took a while to get there. You know, it certainly took a while to get there, but like with anything, you got to have that life balance. You know, if not, the burnout is real. Do you, did you ever imagine though that, uh, that, that, eight, you know, eight years down the road that you'd still be in this industry because it is rough. I mean, you've survived COVID, you've yeah. survived some hurricanes come yes. through here. I mean, you've survived a lot. Did you ever imagine uh, that you could still be standing eight years later after all the hurdles? You know, I think the only time I ever, I, I guess the question is, I, the statement I would say is uh, that I never looked that far ahead. You know, it's kind of you're just handling the problems in front of you. And next thing you know, you look up and it's eight years later. The only time where I was like, man, we this this might not work. It's right at the beginning of COVID. Yeah, sure. It was just such a terrible time for all of us restaurateurs. And then um, one day, honestly, it was my business partner kind of, you know, grabbing by the collar and smacked me upside my head figuratively. And, and like, all right, we got to We got to do this. So then. We all decided, you know, we're not going to roll over. We're not going to show our belly. We're going to stay in front of people. So when they do have money in their pocket again, they'll they'll start eating and drinking. And, and they did. And, and we did. And when was Thorn open? Thorn was open uh, less than a year ago. So this, ago. this May, at, all, at the end of this month, it'll be one year. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, we're getting there. And uh, and, and like you said, la last question before we, sure. we, we roll. Of course. What, what would you say your, your, your clientele base is at Thorn? Is it... Uh, are, are they young people, yuppies, kids, uh, what, families? What do we got? Sure. Um, we get a little bit of everything, but I'd say the majority of my clientele there are younger professionals, uh, uh, younger to younger middle-aged professionals, mid-30s, mid-40s. Um, in that range, I'd say, is, is majority of my clientele at that location. All right. Well, listen, we wish you nothing but continued yeah. success. Sounds Thank like you, so uh, much, sir. you got a great operation. I, I, I love the pictures. I'm going to Definitely make an effort to be there within the next week. I know my kids will love those steak frites that you talked about. Yes. And uh, and I'll, I'll pop in and uh, say hello. I appreciate your time, John. And uh, the name of the restaurant is Thorn, located on Bird Road and uh, 69th. Uh, it's right in the heart of Westchester. And uh, can't wait to get there and try some of these foods we've been talking about. Cheers, yeah. For the South Florida Food Chat, I'm Randy Kastowitz, and we will continue with more right after this. Mm -hmm.